And then, for example, honey, there's been several papers on honey, uh, finding glyphosate in almost all the honey that you can test. But there was a, a paper that did a lot of uh, honey samples from various places, uh, certainly across the Americas, and even maybe Europe too, I'm not, I don't remember, but the ones in the United States clearly showed up as the highest, you know, consistently the highest levels, even in the organic honeys, they also had glyphosate, but at much lower levels. <clears throat> but the highest levels were in the American honeys, which is sad because honey is a really a healthy source of sugar, you know? Yeah, it's it's funny. Um, there was a beekeeper that said it's ridiculous when people say that my honey is 100% organic because you can't dictate where the you can't bee keep your bees away from those. Don't go over there. They've been sprayed. Right, exactly. And of course, I think the bee colony collapse syndrome, I think glyphosate is a major player, probably the most important player in bee colony collapse syndrome. You've got the insecticides that are also contributing. Yeah. And a lot of people are pointing the finger at them correctly. So probably, but glyphosate disrupts enzymes in the liver that detoxify the chemicals that are in the insecticides. So they work synergistically. When you've got the glyphosate in the bee, then its liver can't detoxify the insecticides. Oh, interesting. And so it's a, it's a synergistic toxicity that wipes out the bees. And I think if you got rid of the glyphosate, you'd see a, a, a pretty big improvement on the bee situation, which is devastating because we're going to have a huge problem with many crops when we don't have bees to, to pollinate them. If you were to eat plants, then what are your recommendations? So you just said that garbanzo beans, which is a, um, you know, like some of the legumes, the wheats, the oats, some of those are revered as the best fibrous um, food. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> it's quite interesting that people are so concerned about, and I guess people have learned you need to eat fiber and that will help you to get the short chain fatty acids, which are right. so good for your gut because the, um, as you probably know, the colonocytes love butyrate. That's their favorite food. And butter is a super good source of butyrate. So I Thank really you. push butter. I think organic butter is one of the best things. In fact, when we cook with, when we use oils for cooking, we use butter or mm -hmm. organic lard. Those are our two favorite oils, um, which is interesting because both of them, of course, have cholesterol, which is what people are always trying to avoid right. by, by switching over to vegetable oils. I think the vegetable oils are definitely inferior, even in the absence of glyphosate considerations, but the seed oils are, are, many of them are sprayed with glyphosate right before harvest. So you've got the glyphosate in the, in the vegetable oils, you're right, probably more so than you would have in the animal based. Although the animals, of course, are eating a lot of glyphosate yes. too. They have much higher limits uh, and the cows are quite oh. sick. And I've, I've read um, papers about the cows. In fact, a very interesting paper by um, some Europeans Oh, they found the cows were sick and they tested the glyphosate, found high levels of glyphosate in their urine. And they treated them with um, bentonite clay, uh, fulvic acid, humic acid, and sauerkraut juice, which was very interesting. The sauerkraut juice really caught my eye. Uh, and apparently that was effective. They found that it lowered the levels in their urine and improved their health. So that particular treatment reg regimen that they had figured out, I'm sure, experimentally. But the sauerkraut juice, I find that very fascinating because that's basically a, that's a fermented food. Right. And um, acetobacter is a very common microbe that shows up in fermented foods. And there are very few microbes that can metabolize glyphosate. It has a complicated CP bond that most, um, most species don't know how to break that CP bond. And so um, it's an unusual uh, bond. And, uh, but acetobacter know how to, they have an enzyme that can break that CP bond and can, therefore can turn glyphosate into a nutrient source mm -hmm. of, of, um, of both energy and, and phosphorus and nitrogen. So it becomes a food to them, but it also clears the glyphosate from your body. So I find that really interesting. And I picked up on that and I've been advocating either sauerkraut or any kind of fermented foods and um, apple cider vinegar in particular. Um, because that's also got acetobacter. So oh, that's that's interesting. the recommendation that I have to people is to eat fermented foods for the reason that those microbes could be breaking down the glyphosate, which is the best you can do. So the you know, other things are binders. They'll, they'll uh, bind to the glyphosate and take it out through the feces, but then it's still there. It's not in your body. It's now in, in the feces. And of course, the cows probably have lots of glyphosate in their manure. And that's a problem. Manure is such a valuable thing for fertilizer, but it gets ruined by the diet that these CAFO cows consume. Yeah, that's and that I agree with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's and, and it makes sense. So the bentonite clay and the fulvic acid, all of those will be binders and it'll help to remove some of the toxins. And then, like you said, with that um, specific um, strain, that makes a lot of sense and why they would give that support to then help the animals.